What's going on, y'all? Machiavelli Mills TV. So, since his loss to Javante Tank Davis, Ryan Garcia has been ranting. He been on his soapbox. He been giving speeches about all the things that happened post-fight, right? So, this is the first thing he said. He said, after the after the fight, nobody was there for me. My team just didn't come to my team just didn't come to the press conference. Somebody betrayed me in camp. I was left with that. I had Tank's team care about me more than my own team. And I made a video telling y'all that Oscar De La Hoya and Bernard Hopkins, they was bogus. Wrong them, they was wrong as hell for how they did, Shorty. They left him at the post, the, uh, the press conference, the post-fight press conference by himself. He answering the questions, sitting there by himself. They're not standing by his side. This is the hardest situation that your fighter has ever dealt with at this point. His first loss, like a, a, a prime time loss where this was a mega fight. And he lost his fight, and he has to face the music. All fighters have to face the music when they lose, right? But at the same time, sometimes it could be a depressing situation for such a young guy who also has a history of mental health problems or whatever. Why weren't they there for their fighter? That was wrong as hell. I was like, see, the stuff like that, that's shysty. You know, because they were all for him. Before the fight, I'm talking about they was all by his side. They was promoting the fight like crazy, talking all the shit in the world. Talking crazy, how the, uh, Javante was, I mean, Ryan was going to do this, do that, do this and that to Javante Davis. It was going to be a slaughter, all this type of shit they was talking. And then after the fight, you know where to be found. And I think it's extra wrong because that boy didn't brought in all that money for y'all, right? He signed off on this fight happening. He came and signed off on this fight happening. He could have dodged this fight and said, you know what, I'm going to wait till I get a little older. I'm going to wait till I get more experience under me and have this fight. He signed off on this fight right away, which Oscar, Oscar De La Hoya himself knew was going to bring in millions for Golden Boy, okay? After he didn't help you rake in millions, you're going to leave him up there by himself? That's shysty. And I'm with Ryan on that. Hell nah. How, tank, how is his opponent's own team more concerned and more caring to him than the people that he signed on, that he, that he promoted by? Like Bernard Hopkins trying to touch all on Tank, talk all this shit. He know where to be found. Like, come on, dog. What are you talking crazy? Trying to nah get getting tank head. Where you were? Where is your support for your fighter after such a major loss? All right. Now, Ryan Garcia said some other things. Right. He said, "I'm like." He was talking about you know the um re the rehydration clause and how it affected him. He said, "I'm like, why can't I move? Everything was drained out of me already. Even I was even I was like, my legs feel weak. Everything feels weak." Because they didn't let me rehydrate the white the right way. Ryan, don't do that, fam. Now see stuff like that, that pissed me off. That's annoying. You signed off on that. Ain't nobody put a gun to your head and made you sign off on that rehydration clause. You chose to sign off on that. So now when you sign off on when you sign off on it, don't use it as an excuse for why you lost, why you took the L. Okay? Like I don't like when people do that. You agreed to that um to that term, and then when stuff don't go your way, now it's all oh, they they, it was this and that. Don't be on your, don't be on a pity tour with that. I ain't trying to hear that shit. Like you know what I'm saying. Don't agree to something you feel you aren't capable of fighting. Like don't agree to something that you feel you aren't capable of fighting your best in. If you're not capable of fighting your best with a rehydration with a rehydration clause, don't sign on it. Okay, don't do that. If you feel like you got to use it as an excuse afterwards, that's silly. But but it's on him. Because he signed that. He signed off on that, dog. Like, come on. I'm not. We're not doing that, man. Like, I don't know. Then he talking about he couldn't really move and all that. Bro, your speed was there. You just fought Tank and you ran into a Mack truck. Okay? Seriously. That Mack truck smacked you in the jaw and in your body. And you didn't know how to react to that shit. So, you was there. You was quick as ever. You was quick as hell. You was all, you know, you was on your little. In the second round, he came out aggressive, ultra aggressive. I'm talking about. Super like um, you know, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? He came out guns, guns are blazing. Right? Tank trying to he tried to throw everything but the kitchen sink at Tank. You should have saw him. He was, the crowd was behind him. They was hooting and hollering and all that shit. And you was doing all that real smooth and quick until you got caught. After you got caught, you got cautious. Cause you knew what was on the other side. You throwing all them crazy punches, you over over committing, you knew what was on the other side of that. What was counter what countered you? Shook you up a little bit. So don't say it was a rehydration clause. Tank punches shook you up a little bit, right? So I don't like when people try to 
make that as the reason why wow, that that's some nah dog we're not doing that because had he won he would have never said nothing like this had he won okay and if tank would have said something like this if tank had the re rehydration clause ryan garcia would have been clowning tank so nah we come on no and Ryan talking about Deontay came to Deontay Wilder. You know, all these people was talking about Deontay Wilder excuses and how Deontay can't fight for shit and all that. Cool. Had an opinion. But when you talking shit like that, dog, like, nah, you you can't be coming out with these damn excuses when you talking that shit. All these people that was talking about Deontay Wilder and all this, Tiafimo Lopez and the excuses, they ass came out with excuses of their own after they took their first loss. So let's tell you about folks. People talk, they talk one way. But when they get their loss, they try to reach for any excuses that any excuse they can. They talk shit about somebody else, but when they take that L, now they can't face the music. Now they're trying to reach for reach high and low for goddamn excuses. Oh god damn. This what you on now, bro? Nah, don't do that. Don't do that. You gotta humble. It's okay. But you ran into somebody that was superior to you. That was his levels to this shit. And he was on this type of level, you was a little down here, and you ran into that monster, you ain't know how to deal with it. So don't come with all that now. Nah. And then he also said this, right? He said, I learned a lot. He was the better man. I want to run that back after I, rack up some, after I rack up some wins. The right weight, 140 pounds. No rehydration clause. I did it for the people this time. But when I come back, I'm going to do it for me. Really? You did it for the people? You did it for the people. Who the, who the hell are you? The Rock or Rikishi? Wanna did it for the people. I did it for the Rock. Like what the fuck? Like I don't like when people when people say stuff like um, you know I did it. I did it for the people. Like don't no, no. Do it for yourself every single time. You know what I'm saying do what you got to do because you you didn't. First of all, you didn't do it for the people. You did it for yourself in any way because you thought you were going to be victorious. You thought you was going to come out on top. You thought you was going to win that fight, and you knew if you won that fight. The tie would turn in your favor, and you would be one of the biggest, you would be looked at as one of the biggest draws in boxing had you defeated Tank Davis. So you did it for yourself, not for the fans, not for the people. You did it because you genuinely thought you could beat Tank, and you thought you were going to dethrone him and become a, a cash cow in boxing had you beat him, right? But it's the same shit rappers say when they records, when they album flop, when they shit flop, and, they, and it don't sell, they say something like, I didn't make that for the people. I made that for me. I made it for me. That was a record I made for myself. I didn't make that for the people. Bullshit. If you made it for yourself, keep that. Like 50 Cent told, uh, told the artist. If you made it for yourself, keep that shit in your house. Keep that shit in your house if you made it for yourself. Don't like, don't do that. You made it, you made it for, for public consumption because you thought you was this shit and it flopped. Ryan Garcia, you did that for yourself and you could you wanted for the the, the public consumption because you thought it was going to be your coronation. You thought it was going to be a moment you would be looked at as a top guy. You thought it was going to be your crowning moment and you fell on your face. Now you got the egg on your face, the boo-boo on your face and shit. Now the bird and boo-booed on your head and shit. Now, now you talking about you didn't do it. You did it for the people. Bro, no. Either way, either way you was going to lose. Even if you did it for yourself or the people, you were going to lose because just, it's just levels to the F. At 140, Tank B now. That rehydration clause, nah. Because at first he was talking, talking about the rib injury. Oh, I, they knew I had a rib injury. And I'm like, bro, what? What are you talking about? Body punches were going to happen in this fight regardless. It's a part of boxing, okay? And Tank don't fight like Muhammad Ali. I love Ali. Love Ali. But Ali only headhunted. He only... I ain't never seen Ali throw a whole lot of body shots in my life. I rarely ever seen him throw body shots like that. Always to the head. Tank, go, Tank don't fight like that. Counter punch, he go to the body. He give you the uppercut to the body. He go all type of uh, hooks to the body. He dig through the jab at the body. He go to the head and all of that. He sets you up to go to the body. He, he switches up his um shots from the body, uh, from the body to the head to get you confused. And so you think he going for the body, go for the head. You think he going for the head, go for the body. You know what I mean? So you were gonna get hit in the ribs regardless. So all of that, oh, they knew about my injury. Bro, as if body punches don't happen in boxing all the time. It's a part of the fight game. It's not a new thing or something unknown. Oh, my God. Wait a minute. They told me his ribs are hurt. If I go for the body, bro, Tank was going to dig on your body anyway. He was going to go to work on you. So all that shit, get the fuck on. You know what I'm saying? And I I think Ryan Garcia is a really talented fighter. Um, I think he will improve working with Derrick James, Errol Spence's uh, head trainer. I really do. 
But this other shit, some of these excuses and all that, like, nah, dog. I did it for the people. This time, I'm going to do it for me. You always did it for you, bro. This is prize fighting. You knew that bag was on the line. And you knew that future bags was on the line because you would, you would be possibly looked at as the cash cow had you went in there and showed out and did your thing and beat Tank. You didn't. You didn't beat Tank. Now you got a now you got rid of your whole team. You get a new team. You get you got a new team now, uh, and a new uh, training team, and you trying to figure out the best way to put yourself back into position to be a cash cow once again, right? So all of that you did it for the people. I did it for the people. I did it for the Rock. I'm <laughs> and y'all ain't if y'all ever seen wrestling, y'all know what the hell I'm talking about. That shit when the Rock did that, I was dying laughing as a kid. But no, bro, don't do that. I was just the, the rapper's favorite line. I didn't make that album for the people. I made it for me. Keep that shit in your house then, man. You did it because you thought it was going to hit, and it didn't. Ryan went out there and made this fight because he thought he was going to crack Tank, and he was going to get him up out of there, and he was going to expose Tank to the world and be the new leading man in boxing, and it didn't happen. But I wish the best for Ryan Garcia going forward. Um, I think he will improve under Derrick James vastly in a lot of different areas. But I don't. I just still don't know if it's enough to beat. I don't think it's enough to beat a Shakur Stevenson or Devin Haney. Him and Devin will have a competitive fight, but I don't know, man. I just think I don't know, man. Him and Devin, he's got great hand speed, all that. But I think Devin would counter him. Devin may not be the puncher that Tank is, but he will counter him enough to rack up a lot of points. Aaron, uh, Ryan still be throwing his shots with his chin in the air. And be closing his eyes when he swings at times. He can get clipped by Devin with something. And it may not stop him. But it'll sting him and tally up enough points to win a fight. But best of luck to Ryan Garcia going forward. Peace.